Welcome up! In this episode we will talk about the political realism of Machiavelli, coming up. Hello, I'm Understanding Politics, and in this channel I explain political theories and debates to students as well as curious and passionate people, just like you. Given that Machiavelli is a great political thinker, there are many things to address. I have structured this lecture in five chapters that you can navigate through the description. In the first one, I will address the political context at Machiavelli's time. In the second one, we will discuss his take on the nature of humankind. The third one will introduce the prince, but its main ideas are also discussed in the fourth part. Finally, in the last one, we will briefly talk about the discourses upon the first decade of Titus Livius. Niccolò Machiavelli lived between 1469 and 1527, which means he lived across what we consider, by convention, the end of the Middle Age and the beginning of modernity. While for centuries Italian city-states and later regional states had managed to resist to foreign domination through a system of alliances, this revealed no more possible when in 1493 Charles VIII of France descended through Italy to engage militarily the reign of Naples. He did not meet real resistance, and it became evident that not one among the Italian states could compare to the strength of reigns such as France or Spain. Di qui nacquero poi nel 1494 i grandi spaventi, le subite fughe e le miracolose perdite, e così tre potentissimi stati, che erano in Italia, sono stati più volte saccheggiati e guasti. Ma quello che è peggio è che quelli che ci restano stanno nel medesimo errore e vivono nel medesimo disordine, e non considerano che quelli che anticamente volevano tenere lo Stato facevano e facevano fare tutte quelle cose che da me si sono ragionate, e che il loro studio era preparare il corpo a disagi e lo animo a non temere i pericoli. By writing the prints and the discourses, Machiavelli aimed at learning from the Italian political experience. In this phase, Italian politics was characterized by corruption and subsequent instability of these states. In questi non è cosa alcuna che gli ricomperi da ogni estrema miseria, infamia e vituperio, dove non è osservanza di religione, non di leggi, non di milizia, ma sono maculati da ogni ragione bruttura. E tanto sono questi vizi più detestabili quanto ei sono più in coloro che seguono pro tribunali, comandano a ciascuno e vogliono essere adorati. Yes, let's start from the basis for those among you that are not well informed on European history. Italy was not a united country until 1861, while the geographical reality always existed. The peninsula was almost always called this way. In the period we are discussing, the political reality looked more or less like this. For Machiavelli, the anarchy reigning over Italian politics was to reconduct to the nature of the human character, which is unchanged throughout history. Politics, as any other human activity, is characterized by instability and a continuous oscillation between order and disorder. This oscillation between virtue and corruption is due to the fact that humans have unlimited wants, but limited resources to realize them. Let me just draw your attention that this thought, formulated in the 15th century, is the basis of modern economy and the starting point of Marx's reasonings. But back to Machiavelli. Men are characterized by this greed that motivates their every action. This is even more true for politicians. Perché degli uomini si può dire questo generalmente, che siano ingrati, volubili, simulatori e dissimulatori, fuggitori dei pericoli, cupidi di guadagno, e mentre fai loro bene sono tutti tua offerendoti il sangue, la roba, la vita e figliuoli, come di sopra dissi quando il bisogno è discosto, ma quando ti si appressa essi rivoltano, e quel principe che si è tutto fondato in sulle parole loro, trovandosi nudo di altre preparazioni, rovina perché le amicizie che si acquistano col prezzo e non con grandezza e nobiltà di animo si meritano, ma le non si hanno, e a tempi non si possono spendere. E gli uomini hanno sempre meno rispetto a offendere uno che si faccia amare che uno che si faccia temere, perché l'amore è tenuto da uno vincolo di obbligo, il quale, per essere gli uomini tristi, da ogni occasione di propria utilità è rotto, ma il timore è tenuto da una paura di pena che non ti abbandona mai. Debbe non di manco il principe farsi temere in modo che, se non acquista lo amore, che fugga l'odio, perché può molto bene stare insieme e essere temuto e non odiato, il che farà sempre quando si astenga dalla roba dei suoi cittadini e dai suoi sudditi, 
e dalle donne loro, e quando pure li bisognasse, procedere contro al sangue di alcuno, farlo quando vi sia giustificazione conveniente e causa manifesta, ma soprattutto astenersi dalla roba d'altri, perché gli uomini sdimenticano più presto la morte del padre che la perdita del patrimonio. Di poi, le cagioni del torre, la roba non mancano mai, e sempre colui che comincia a vivere con rapina trova cagioni di occupare quel d'altri, e per avverso contro il sangue sono più rare e mancano più presto. His conception is drastically different from that of Plato or Aristotle, because Machiavelli believes that there is an opposition between what one needs to do and what one does. This means that the only important reality for the politician is the contingent one. There is not ideal reality, no ideal constitution, that needs to be taken as a model for the action of the politician. Quite on the contrary, there are only contemporary political realities upon which the politician can choose the best strategy to achieve the objective he intends to achieve. This is the typical cynicism, which I would call more of a pragmatism, of which Machiavelli is often accused of. For Machiavelli, politics is important as it subtracts men from their natural disorder and makes of order something objective, that is, of course, the state. Interesting to note is that Machiavelli was the first political writer using the word state to refer to a political community. Before him, clearly, the word republic was the most used. Again, republic is still in use today as a relatively neutral term, but the most effective word to describe a regime without giving it attributes is referring to the state. This is one of the many things to note when we think about Niccolò Machiavelli as the father of modern politics. This word was used in the Italian bureaucracies during the 15th century and derived from Latin as a neutral reference to a condition, status libertatis, status servitudis. It was used to indicate what Machiavelli called dominio che imperio sopra gli uomini. I guess you remember the concept of imperium if you watch my video on Cicero. The state is hence a power that holds men together in unity. Here it is implicit that the state is power because order can be only realized through coercion. This also means that politics is the fight or competition for power. Despite many things have changed over time in our understanding of politics, I think that this idea by Machiavelli is likely an unchanging reality of politics. In this sense, once again, it is important to repeat that Machiavelli abandons any analysis of the ideal constitutions and regimes to focus on contingent ways to exert power. In this sense, the only political thoughts relevant are the strategies to create reigns and conserve them over time. Machiavelli also identifies two major ideas of regimes, the Principates and the Republic. Let me translate this in common political science language. The Principate or Principato is a reign with a monarch, a prince. The Republic is virtually a democracy as it was intended in ancient Rome with the participation of citizens. This is also another element founding our modern understanding of politics. But since Machiavelli, as Cicero, was a supporter of mixed regimes, he did not intend the Principato as an autocracy, a dictatorship or absolute monarchy, and the Republic as a democracy. Quite on the contrary, he intended both systems as mixed, but he assumed that in the former the prince was preeminent, whereas on the latter it was the people to be more important. Little excursus here. Machiavelli is often considered a theoretician of autocracy because of what he writes in The Prince. Yet, he was a far more enthusiast supporter of the Republic. In the discourses upon the first decade of Tito Livius, this is evident. But since he is pragmatic and believes that a state is ultimately power, he believes that in certain situations, principates are necessary and more effective, especially when a territory is scattered. The Prince is effectively conceived as an instructive book for an Italian prince that could be able to unite Italy in a unique and strong state, as France or Spain. But if times were different, he would wish for a republic to reign over Italy. To go back to Machiavelli and forms of government, in the prince he distinguishes several cases. A principato can be hereditary or new, the new can be entirely new or only partially, and among the new ones he distinguishes among communities used to live under their laws and those used to live under a prince. 
Principate can also be acquired through one's own arms or somebody else's. Finally, they can be acquired through virtue or luck. You see already as Machiavelli's reasoning is often disjunctive, and the choices he proposes are dictated based on the final goal, on the need to preserve power. Also, in his writings, Machiavelli often proposes contemporary political cases as examples to prove his points. One example is Louis XII of France and his campaign to Italy. This happened in 1499 when Louis XII conquered Milan and most of Lombardy, when the region was weakened by the advance of Venice. At that point, according to Machiavelli, he should have secured the territory by establishing an alliance with Venice and weakening the state of Rome and the reign of Naples. This would have also favored his project to rule over Italy and making France the only foreign power on the Italian peninsula. Quite on the contrary, he supported Pope Alexander VI in his campaign over Romagna, very close to Venice, de facto antagonizing all the allies. Then he attempted the conquest of the reign of Naples, but the conquest revealed more difficult than what he had foreseen. This led him to request the help of Spain, another big mistake according to Machiavelli. This culminated in defeat in Ravenna, in Romagna, and then in the loss of Milan. According to Machiavelli, Louis XII made mistakes because he did not study history and did not conceive a strategy based on previous successful examples. It is in these central chapters that Machiavelli draws a line in terms of the autonomy of politics from morality, because he sees maintaining power as a cornerstone of political actions. At the same time, this reasoning is to be understood for what it is. The prince should respect the agreements, but can disregard religion and the church if these limit his action. But also, a prince should avoid being hated by its citizens. Respected, yes, feared at times, hated never. So better to save money than to spend in excess. Better to be feared than loved. These rational and sometimes pessimistic strategies are what led many to think as Machiavelli as a cynical. By contrast, Machiavelli's reasoning is based on the assumption that the relationship between ruler and ruled is never based on rationality, but rather on emotions. By the way, he never effectively used the expression the end justifies the means, but it is true that a similar conclusion can be drawn from these chapters of The Prince. This is a noticeable revolution in the approach to politics, and suggests that there is a primacy of politics over morality. An action can be morally wrong, but still politically savvy. Machiavelli continues down this reasoning, explaining that there are two ways to rule, by law or by force. The former is proper of men, the latter of beasts. But since sometimes the laws is not enough, force becomes necessary. Sendo dunque uno principe necessitato sapere usare bene la bestia, debba di quelle pigliare la golpe di leone, perché il leone non si difende da lacci, la golpe non si difende da lupi. Similarly, the prince does not need to be good and pious, he just needs to look like he is. This is dramatic, as Machiavelli believes that in politics, to be does not correspond to appearing. This happens because human actions can be ascribed to two different spheres, the private one and the public one. While in the private sphere, to be and to appear correspond, this is not the case for the public one. All these chains of reasonings lead to the idea that some actions might be necessary, and evil cannot be ruled out of politics. This is often the same way that things are proposed in the approach of political realism in international relations. If a state needs to wage war to ensure its survival, then that might be its only course of action, even if using violence it's morally wrong. It is also worth mentioning that Machiavelli sees history as superior to men, and in history there are some rules, such as the cyclical life of institutions, even states. A savvy political man needs to understand history and its rules to act with virtue. Again, virtue here is not to be interpreted in a moral sense, but as the ability to achieve a political goal. Virtue is opposed to luck, where luck, or chance, corresponds to absolute lack of awareness over the best course of action. A prince can be virtuous but not favored by historical events, and vice versa, a lucky prince can be favored by history despite not showing any virtue. The book is concluded by an exhortation to Lorenzo de' Medici to become the prince that will unite the Italian peninsula under a single state. As anticipated, the discourses unveil the republican soul of Machiavelli's political thought. The background of the reasonings contained in this book are the political events, or rather turmoil, that characterized politics in Florence at Machiavelli's time. His political career ended exactly when the republican experience of Florence failed and the Medici returned to power. In a political environment such as the Republic, according to Machiavelli, the goal is not to conserve power but to realize the freedom of citizens. 
and the freedom of citizens could only be achieved in the tensions and negotiations between patricians and plebis in ancient Rome. This was what made the Roman Republic interesting. At the beginning of this book, Machiavelli does not hesitate to declare that the people can guarantee much more stability to a state than a prince. On the other hand, corruption that Machiavelli associates with Italian states of his time is not associated with the flaws or nature of people, but with the mistakes and lack of morality of Italian princes and courts. If in The Prince Machiavelli studies the relationship between state and power, then in the discourses he studies the relationship between state and political community. In this sense, also the concept of virtue is extended to comprehend discipline and righteousness. Also, the state is not based on the ruler's will, but on three levels. Orders, laws and costumes. Orders shall be understood as institutions. Laws are what limit the actions of who is in power, the fact of guaranteeing the rights of citizens. This is another point where Machiavelli from the Prince disagrees with Machiavelli, author of the Discourses. As an example, it would be enough to say that Machiavelli condemns Julius Caesar, the dictator, and exalts Brutus. Finally, there are costumes. Costumes for Machiavelli are at the art of political communities as they create the sense of the participation to political life. Surprising is the fact that Machiavelli considers religion to be the unifying element that created this sense of community. Here religion is to be understood essentially as fear of God. This is what leads men to respect laws and live in harmony in societies. But where there is lack of belief in God, Machiavelli sees only the fear that can be imposed by an unscrupulous prince. All of this is in perfect line with what was expressed by the Roman political thought. As a matter of fact, costumes, or mos maiorum, were the guiding principles of political life. Therefore, Machiavelli is not interested in discussing religion per se, but to argue what religion does for society. In the end, for the people, God is the source of authority. This general evaluation applied also to Italy at its time, where corruption was the result of loss of faith into religion. His harsh judgment was intended for the Roman Church and the Papal State, which he believed to be the reason for the Italian weakness. Finally, his reasoning terminates by addressing virtue, stating that when politics is decaying and drives away from morality, it is better to be a private citizen than to become an actor of the political arena. Once again, this lecture is over. Thank you for watching.